Hello, welcome to Meet Your Neighbor. We're here at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts with Chris Waldman, who is the Artistic Director. And we would like to take some time and sit down with Chris today, see the art around and talk a little about her life, whether it's spent working at the Art Center or walking her dogs out on the trail in Hopkinton. Hi, Chris. Welcome to Meet Your Neighbor. It's good to see you today here at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts. Hello. Uh, you're sitting in the midst of an exhibit and there's much to talk about, it seems, about art when it comes to you as well as, which is more on the inside, as well as what is on the outside. Uh, and I know one of the things that you're known for in your love of Hopkinton is uh, in walking your dogs. Uh, that we might see you on some trail somewhere around town, uh, that that is a love dear to you as well. How long have you been living in Hopkinton? Um, it's been about 15 years. Um, okay. I had lived closer to the city before, uh -huh. yeah. and uh, even though I was working in the city at the time, um, I moved out here in spite of the horrible commute because it felt like I was um, coming home to a retreat every night and every weekend. Mm -hmm. um, I really fell in love with Hopkinson very quickly and um, have loved exploring the trails and woods and lakes and beautiful places it has. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you do that on your own or with your dogs or a little of both? Usually with my dogs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I understand you're an animal lover. There are animals surrounding you right at the moment. Behind yeah, you. yeah. Uh -huh. I had been um, sculpting for many years after having been a painter for most of my life. Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine asked me to do a painting for her as a gift to give to her, her husband of their dogs. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found that I sure loved that subject matter. And um, I decided to paint my own animals. This is Ophelia, who's no longer with us. Oh, yeah. And this is Tucker, Beautiful. who's now 17. Beautiful. And still hobbling along on the trails with me. <laughs> wow, at 17. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, that's interesting. The uh, fusion of animals, what you love uh, on the outside, and it's uh, shown in your art here at the Art Center as well. So now we know you are an artist you come from um, a background that has focused a little on art in the past in your work and uh, when possible to work on your own in your studio and you've made a little bit of a transition to a different kind of life in addition to moving to Hopkinton. Um, can you tell a little bit about your job as artistic director? Yeah, it's, it's um, been a really wonderful transition for me. Um, I had been a graphic designer for most of my adult life. Mm -hmm. um, prior to that, I worked in human services because actually my uh, BA was in political science. Mm -hmm. Most wow. people assume it was an art, but I got into um, really uh, studying and doing art more seriously later in my life. Mm -hmm. Even though I had done it as a, a child, I always thought that's kind of always there, it was always on the side. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until recently that I realized I could integrate it into my love, into my life, um, in a fuller way. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it just wasn't that special thing I would do when I had some time. Mm -hmm. um, I could really devote my working life to it and my play life. And mm -hmm. that's great. I love working here for that reason. Uh, did that involve some kind of life change for you? Some sacrifice? Some kind of transition from? corporate world to out in the suburb working at an art center? Oh yeah, huge. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Um, I had worked as a graphic designer for over 25 years and um, loved it for much of that time but was really ready for a change. Mm -hmm. And um, though I still do some freelance work in graphic design, I liked the idea of working here and integrating other aspects of art into my profession. Mm -hmm. So um, though I do the graphic design here as well, um, I love the idea of putting together shows and expanding the exhibits that we have here mm -hmm. and um, encouraging artists 
and uh, audiences that maybe haven't come here before mm -hmm. um, to try to reach out to more people because um, I think we've got this gem here that many people don't know about. Mm -hmm. mm. Are you an educator as well in art? Yes, mm -hmm. that was also um, a, a more recent um, thing that I did in life. When I left the corporate world, I wasn't sure if I wanted to teach art or, you know, I didn't quite know what facet of it I wanted to get into. Mm -hmm. So um, I did get my teaching license and uh, went to a Montessori school for a year and volunteered there. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a wonderful experience. And, but I decided I wanted to do teaching, which I do here, mm -hmm. as well as other things, and um, maybe help grow this center. I had been on the board of the CAA mm -hmm. for many years, and there just happened to be an opportunity where the CAA needed an exec director. Mm -hmm. And um, though it meant a major change in uh, salary scale mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and lifestyle, <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, I, I thought it was the right move for me. Uh -huh. And since then we've grown into the HCA mm -hmm. and um, joined forces with Interstage Left and the Hopkinton Endowment mm -hmm. and we're just growing madly mm -hmm. in leaps and bounds every day and it's really exciting. That's great. So what, what advice would you have for other people who are thinking that kind of a life change, you know? Uh, maybe what uh, would you say is benefit or advice in doing what you did, which is brave, making that kind of change uh, for something you love to do, the passion of art that you have? Yeah, um, I did read a book called Leap mm -hmm. by, I believe, Sarah Davidson, okay. I think. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's very much about this, where you might come to a point in your life where you think, okay, um, that's great. I sort of feel like I accomplished, hopefully, most of what I wanted to do in my particular field, but what else, what else is there? Mm -hmm. um, so I think that it's really worth taking a chance. Of course, I did it in the worst economy I've ever lived through. Uh -huh which um, was even more scary and some people thought not so wise but I thought you know I have to do it now or never mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, it's just so great to have the um, time and opportunity to do the things that I've always wanted to do that I rarely had time for before mm -hmm. um, I've been doing more yoga mm -hmm. and um, exploring other forms of art and um, it just feels like living life more. Uh -huh. That sounds good. Yep. Uh, well, that's good to hear. How about you for, in addition to the new kind of work that you found that connects with what is in your heart for the world of art and community, uh, how about for yourself as an artist? Can you Talk a little bit about that, maybe how you got started, what you love to do in art, what you do now. Yeah, um, I started art lessons, oil painting lessons, um, when I was pretty young, I was maybe seven, mm -hmm. and I think it was primarily because my mother wanted to get me out of the house, out from under her <laughs> feet, as she would say. Um, oh, yeah. um, but there are quite a number of artists in my family, so um, my mother decided that I had some kind of talent, and I don't know if I did or I didn't, but I think the early training <laughs> probably <laughs> helped. Um, and so I took oil painting lessons for many years um, as I got older in, in other places like the museum school, um, Truro Center for the Arts, the De Cordova. And, um, did finally go back and get my MFA after uh, I went on a retreat in Belize. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, really phenomenal. That's a good place for education. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, up until then, I had thought of art as the thing that I did on vacation or on weekends. Mm -hmm. um, but on this retreat, uh, this teacher, who then became my mentor, Jeannie Kell, encouraged us to um, 
really explore mm -hmm. and get away from what we typically did as artists, mm -hmm. um, explore new materials and new ways of making art. Mm -hmm. And um, when I saw her materials list before I went down there, I wanted nothing to do with it. I mean, there was all this weird stuff in there like, you know, spritzers and doilies and sparkles. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, mm -hmm. and I just thought, um, <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. like, that's not art. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, you know, that just seemed far too playful mm -hmm. to me to mm -hmm. feel like legitimate enough, right? Right. So I went on this retreat. Um, my mother and I went together, which mm -hmm. was a really wonderful, wonderful gift. And my mother brought all that stuff because she was such a good little student. <laughs> and um, I didn't touch any of my materials the whole week. Uh, my mother shared hers with me, and that's all I wanted to use, was just um, what was available right there on the beach where we painted, meaning, you know, natural objects, and these fun, playful, experimental um, materials and methods of making art. And it, it, it was so exhilarating. Mm. I was jumping out of my skin every day. Wow. Mm. And I remember on the plane ride home, I just thought, I just felt like it was life-changing for me. It, mm -hmm. it felt like it gave me some kind of new purpose mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because I could find meaning mm -hmm. in, in simple things that I kind of thought were important, but I couldn't quite put my finger on why I cherished them. Mm -hmm. And I think that doing art enabled me to somehow articulate that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that made me think I want to get really serious about this. And so I went back to school for my master's oh, okay. and decided to really integrate it more mm -hmm. into my life. Mm -hmm. And so what have you been working on since in your own world of art and creation? Um, Do you want to talk about this piece? Um, this yeah, or? yeah. So, well, when I was in um, this program, a wonderful program at Art Institute of Boston, mm. which is a low residency program, which enables adults to continue working full time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And taking, Good idea. Yeah, um, and it's it's very very much geared towards independent study. So you're developing all the habits that hopefully will stick with you once you've left school. Um, in terms of making connections with other artists and finding a way to discipline yourself and get yourself to your studio. Um, so I went into the program thinking I was going to paint and really develop that, but my paintings became more and more three-dimensional. Mm -hmm. And I was encouraged repeatedly to just break out and sculpt, and I was resistant because I love the goopiness and the viscousness of, of paint, particularly oil paint. Mm -hmm. um, but I finally just gave into it and found that I really loved it. There's something about the immediacy of working with your hands and mm -hmm. um, being able to integrate found objects, mm -hmm. um, both man-made and from nature, mm -hmm. that really felt right to me. Because I've always been a collector of things from nature. Mm -hmm. Um, so, for example, this, so many of my sculptures have um, very organic forms um, integrated into them or they've been inspired by organic forms. Mm -hmm. And this is sort of inspired by maybe um, something coral-like, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, but it happens to also resemble a vegetable called Buddha's heart. Okay. And so, um, touch? yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. It, it does look like I can see the coral and Buddha's heart also. Oh. Wow. And then on the inside there, to look inside as well. And um, in the center, there's this pocket of orange. Okay. So I like for there yes. to be little elements of... Um, I don't think we can get the camera in there, but I see what you mean. <laughs> Mystery and surprise. Wow. Uh -huh. Which, um, so often I, I find 
in little things that I pick up in nature. Mm -hmm. I know you emphasize little things and, and you kind of find these, uh, the mystery and the holy of them as well in your art. Yeah. Uh, well, it, it's quite beautiful. Can you tell me a little about beauty, what you've learned about beauty from being an artist? Um, yeah, I think um, it's, it's made me look more carefully at things mm -hmm. and uh, made me see some things that maybe people normally assume without really looking at them are ugly or maybe just not really worth bothering with. I remember a photograph at your exhibit uh, as well as sculpture where you address that without saying so. Mm. Yeah, m much of my photography... Fungus on, on a leaf or something. Yes. Right? Uh -huh. um, yeah, much of the photography is uh, macro shots. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the one you're referring to is fungus that I found um, on the floor of one of the forests in this town. Um, Hopkinton fungus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and when I got down on the ground and peered into it, it was this whole amazing world in there, like full of colors and textures and wet areas and dry areas. Mm -hmm. And um, this thing was like that big. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I was just really awed by it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you made it famous. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> and uh, that seems to be uh, prevalent in your art, uh, demonstrated in, in your art, which, you know, from a distance it might look a little mysterious. What is that? You know, and, and to show uh, this inner beauty and mystery of things, of life. Do you, do you feel uh, that that is a connection you have with uh, nature and, and animals? I know you love both being outdoors and you love your pets and you love your art. Do you see uh, some common thread with all of that or some, some uh, theme? some uh, that keeps coming through to you and in, in what you're especially like to say through art? Hmm. Um, you can say no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it. Well, I think it has something to do with um, um, appreciating and seeing that it's really the, sounds kind of corny, but um, the simple mm. things. Mm -hmm. Yeah in life that kind of bring you, bring you back from this ever more crazy whirlwind of activity that's around us mm -hmm. um, every day in the world um, to let you th think about and focus on what, what's really wonderful mm -hmm. and um, what you can cherish about just being here. Uh. Yeah. Wow. Um, I think it's so easy to get caught up in our daily frustrations, whether it's that, um, you know, your car won't start or um, your dog went to the bathroom in the house, which Tucker is now doing now <laughs> oh, that he's so gosh. old, um, to being super sad that a parent passed away mm. and kind of feel like... Um, feel that, let that despair take you over. Mm -hmm. And um, I think just these simple things bring you back to what is so wonderful about it. Wow. Well, I'm glad I asked you that question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a, quite, a, quite a response. Um, and I was thinking in your making uh, this little uh, object here, uh, famous, uh, Naomi Shihab Nye, uh, a poet, a great poet, has a poem about being famous. I was wondering what your answer would be if you could name a day in your life you felt famous, <laughs> however you want to define that, just for fun. Huh. Like what you did for your art, for the fungus out there. Hmm. 
or, or a particular uh, moment you can highlight from your memory? Feels a little famous in some way to you. Um, I think it was in fifth grade. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I was really, really shy as a kid. I mean, I wouldn't talk for long stretches of time. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I mean, I had friends, but it was, it was, you know, very kind of quiet and off to the side. Mm -hmm. um, so when I went to school in fifth grade mm -hmm. and got to the, the playground where we would assemble before class, mm -hmm. get into our lines, very straight lines, so we could all file in. Um, there was this big buzz that I had won this contest, this poster contest. And everybody in the whole school ground t seemed to know about it, was congratulating me. Uh -huh. And uh, it was kind of w weird to be suddenly recognized mm -hmm. that way. And it felt pretty great. Mm, yeah, yeah. So you won the poster contest. Yeah, and I won a bike. And you won a bike? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a big prize back then. Yeah, so... Do you still have the bike? I don't. No. I wish I oh, did. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I still hope I can someday <laughs> reach that pinnacle. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a great famous moment to have from of the past. moments. <laughs> yes, and to influence you uh, forward, uh, you know, along your journey. Really interesting. Now, how would people get to know more about you as an artist at this point? Uh, do you have a website? Or? I do. Yeah. Uh -huh. ChrisWaldman.com. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. K-R-I-S. And you have some of your artwork and other things on there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, artwork is on there, graphic design, photography. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, I would highly recommend it. No, having seen your art before. Now, how about... Uh, one thing you can think of, maybe people don't know so much about Chris Waldman now, that might be a little interesting to hear or to know. Not an expose, but something we don't usually <laughs> know about Chris Waldman when we see her at the HCA or out on the pass. Hmm. Um. Probably, I'm hoping that we can um, edit this because I was going to say, <laughs> <laughs> but I already said it, the thing about having actually studied political science and not having any uh -huh. intention of doing art, but I already said it, so I don't know if that's a good thing to talk um, about. To be political. And I was. Mm -hmm. mm. Maybe I still can, because yeah. I did do that for many years. Okay, so um, I would... Sorry. <laughs> sorry, don't uh, Probably that um, I... When I went to school at Dickinson for mm -hmm. my bachelor's, mm -hmm. um, and was studying political science, I spent a year in Italy um, in a communist city mm -hmm. and I graduated and my goal was, you know, to change the world mm -hmm. and um, I don't know what, how I thought I could do that, but uh, I worked in human services for five years and got completely burned out. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, um, was also working at a feminist newspaper, mm -hmm. Sojourner for yeah. 18 years. Mm -hmm. um, so I think uh, most people probably associate me with just kind of doing the art thing my whole life. Mm -hmm. But you have this political minded side of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say they the wouldn't back. have guessed about that. Uh -huh. Right, yeah. Well, that is interesting. I'm glad I asked. <laughs> <laughs> More questions for another interview. <laughs> but um, and uh, in knowing that, uh, do you have any words of advice uh, forward or any 
observation of yourself, what has helped to guide you on your interesting journey, being a little political, coming, uh, being corporate, coming back to art, walking in the woods of Hopkinton. You know, uh, any common thread of guidance you've had that helps you in all these changes and uh, different kinds of work and, and life practice that you've been through? Um, I think if you discover that you have an interest in something, that it's really worth exploring it mm -hmm. and to not be afraid to do it, mm -hmm. even if it's scary. Mm -hmm. um, that does seem to be a theme of, of yours in this interview, of taking risks that you have done. I guess. <laughs> I don't know. But a friend of uh -huh. mine once said to me, she gave me some really good advice. Mm. Um, I was really, really nervous to take on a particular project mm -hmm. at work. And I just thought, oh my God, I'm in over my head. I am terrified. Maybe I should let them know. Uh, I haven't done this before and I don't know if I can do it. And, and she said, you know what, um, when you are not challenged like this, you're bored. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you wanted to leave that job before this challenge came up for you. Mm -hmm. And in the past, when you've taken things like this on, you've rallied and figured out a way to do it and felt really great about it afterwards. It felt like you've accomplished something. Mm -hmm. I thought, yeah, okay. Okay, so that, en that enabled me to not get rid of my fear, but at least kind of shelve it mm -hmm. enough to just go forward as boldly as I could mm -hmm. <laughs> within my terror. Uh -huh. Wow, well, that is, that is great and important advice and happy that it moved you forward to your position now in Hopkinton at the Center for the Arts and yeah. in all the work you do here in affecting community to get in touch with art and um, maybe some inner uh, holy and beauty within each of us. So thank you for all you do for the community and for making some time to talk with us here today. Uh, you going for a dog walk this afternoon? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, have a good one then. Thank, thank you. you Chris.